Hello. Oh, hello, well, mate. On this episode of Bondi Vet. Oh my, oh my God. A tiny kitten gives Scott the shock of his life. The injury that this kitten has suffered is absolutely horrific. Come on. Tim finds ships of the desert not so easy to navigate. I can see they're full of character, but also full of attitude. Yeah. It's remarkable that she's still alive considering what she's been up against. And can Chris save a turtle that can't swim? That is the x-ray of a really, really sick turtle. Come on, there's your girl. I can't depend on you. Hey, yeah. So, this is a stray kitten that a lady's been looking after, but unfortunately she couldn't come in today because she's got COVID. Her friends dropped the cat off, doesn't know anything about the kitten. Hello, yes. Just to say you've got an injury on your back end somewhere, haven't you? A kitten has arrived at Scott's Isleworth practice with no name and virtually no details of what's wrong with him. All right, shall we have a look at you? Hey. Scott's in for a shock. Look how pretty you are. And he discovers the nature of the little stray's injury. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. His tail's been ripped off. Isn't that just shocking? Yeah. My heart's absolutely broken for this poor little kitten. The injury that this kitten has suffered is absolutely horrific. I haven't got any information as yet and I'm wondering, has it maybe had an incident with a car, it's run and the tail's been run over and the cat's kept going? This was an agonising, almost tearing of the tail away from this poor cat's body. You can see that we have probably a good couple of centimetres of exposed spinal column. So we're going to have to clean this up. While his hapless patient is prepped for surgery, make some calls to clients sometimes, but um, not usually to say their animals lost a body part and they didn't know. Scott calls the lady who rescued the tiny stray to see if she can shed some light on his horrendous injuries. Oh, hi there, Alice. It's Scott Miller here, the vet from the vet in Old Isleworth. Hi. You've got COVID at the moment, haven't you? You're right. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Oh, good, you poor thing. Just tell me a little bit more about this little stray kitten. Uh, your friend mentioned that the cat had a bit of a, like a, a sore at the back end. What, what did you understand that his injuries were? He got caught underneath a recliner sofa. Oh, a recliner sofa. Oh, I get it. So when it reclined, his tail was in the gap. Probably would be. Oh, Alice. Gosh. Oh, you poor things. It sounds horrific. It was a terrible thing. All right then, Alice. All the best. Okay. Thanks. Bye. 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 Oh my God. I feel so much for this family. They were trying to do the right thing. They'd rescued a cat. And yet less than 24 hours into that journey, this cat's had its tail ripped from its body. That process of amputation was not a quick one. This is just a traumatizing situation for all involved. Still so sweet, aren't you? You're always such a nice boy. Tail or no tail, you're an absolute sweetheart. Yeah. Given what the young stray has endured, Scott gives him a name that reflects his unfortunate start to life. So many animals are called lucky. I think unlucky. Okay. Unlucky. Whenever we see a patient that suffered a traumatic tail injury, we always want to check for two things. First of all, that there's something called anal tone that the, the bum kind of puckers when you touch it and that will show that they're not going to be incontinent. And the second thing is that they can still use their back legs and they're nice and strong on them because sometimes when you pull the tail it can affect the spinal cord further up the body and that can have an impact on the hind limbs function. So that's good. Josie's not going to be constipated alongside having this awful injury. Finally, some good news for unlucky. His hind legs and rear end seem to be working normally. Okay, buddy. 
Sleepy time now. Good boy. Have a lovely dream and try and forget that nightmare you've been through. So what I'm going to be doing with Unlucky here is I'm just clipping up the tail and seeing what's left. Oh my god. Oh, wow. This section at the end is actually a vertebrae. So that's actually a bit of bone. The spine is made up of a series of vertebrae, as we know, and then the ones in the tail stacked along. This one hasn't pulled off completely, but is folded to the side. It's absolutely horrific. I've never seen anything like this in my whole career. I've seen some pretty severe injuries, but one as a result of a reclining chair, well, this is a first for me. So what I need to do is to trim that back and to be able to cover the skin in the area. So yeah, it's a shame that Unlucky won't have a tail, but he's managed to survive this horrific ordeal. He's lost two thirds of his tail. Unfortunately, he's gonna lose a little bit more now. Accidents happen. And I can relate to that because my cat Ricketts has actually had this procedure done three times. When he was very young, he got it stuck in a door. Let's take a little bit off. And got stuck in a window. Take a little bit more off. And then he got attacked by another cat. I took a little bit more off. So <laughs> pretty much every few years, Ricketts' tail got ever increasingly shorter. So a little unlucky won't miss his tail because he has lost it at a very early stage of his development. This guy will develop perfectly well without it, so he'll be just fine. That's all done. That looks a lot better, so I can say with complete modesty that I am far better at amputating a cat's tail than a recliner chair. After 24 years, thank goodness for that. <laughs> just finished his back end, just come to the front I wanted to check his mouth because my thought would be if my tail was caught in a reclining chair I would probably try and bite at it thinking it was trying to attack me and then looking into his little mouth you can see that he's actually lost both of his bottom baby canines and there's actually some loose teeth here so he's definitely given that reclining chair a good old bite. Just like when a mountain lion's got their leg caught in a snare they'll chew at the actual trap but also the leg themselves and in this case this kitten has been chewing and biting at the sofa to try and let this tail go. Yeah, good boy. That's it. Well done. There we go. Oh, poor little man. He's obviously been lost or abandoned. Then he's found a new home only to have his tail be amputated. I think the name Unlucky really suits him. I hope this is the end of his bad luck. Uh, he's not had a good run, have you, mate? You need to start looking after yourself. Boy. Oh, poor little boy. Yes, come on then. Come on then. Sweetheart. Good boy. Okay, just leave surgery to the professionals, okay? All right. Anxiously waiting for news is Unlucky's rescuer, Alice. Hi there, Alice. It's Scott here again, the vet. How are you? Hi. Um, he's lost about two thirds of the length of the tail and we thought yes. it was a good idea to microchip him at the same time so that uh, hopefully go. this is the last time that he's ever stray again. He has been incredibly unlucky. Giving him that as a nickname, actually. I hope you don't mind. But... He's young and I think that he'll get over it very, very quickly. So I really don't think that you should worry. He's lost a magnificent tail, but he's gained some lovely owners and a lovely new home. So unlucky will be just fine. Okay. Okay, Great. see you later, speak soon. Unlucky's owner said, what a beautiful fluffy tail this little kitten had. And yes, he's been quite unlucky, but he got away with this traumatic injury. So I'd hope that even though he has a short tail, he will have a very long and healthy future ahead of him. As a vet, the best advice that I can give pet owners is this. 
Think carefully about the choices that you make on behalf of your pet and you can literally save their lives. And if you make healthy choices, you will have a healthier pet. Timmy. G'day. Full surprises, aren't you, mate? Hey. Come straight through. She is. Tim has arrived at the Bondi Clinic with a critically ill hawksbill turtle he's named Fluky. Right, let's get it up here. I know a sick animal when I see one and this little turtle is in real strife. I really hope that Chris can do something and give her a chance at recovering. So from what you know, she was found floating? Correct. Where? Uh, 40 kilometres offshore from Terrigal, just a little bit south, so basically straight east of Sydney. Wow. And she is, what, at least a, a thousand kilometres further south of, of the absolute limit of where she should at be. At least she's stuck on an ocean current, I guess, and too weak to fight it. Tim's done absolutely the right thing in bringing Fluky in. I mean, straight away you can see she's in bad shape, but when you hear that she was found floating, well, that is a serious cause for concern. Those barnacles and, and this build-up of, of algae says that she's been floating for quite a while. Yep. And these guys feed off the bottom usually, grabbing the, the sea sponges and, yep. and sea grasses and algae, so I mean, she, she would not have eaten for at least a month. But no nutrition isn't this little battler's only problem. This ballooning out of a skin here, which is which is quite strange. That's not something you normally see. So whether she's underweight and the skins then become loose and, and, and doubled up around her, her neck, that's possible. Or there could be something else going on internally. You know, we've got a, what looks like an abscess here as well. Yeah. And that's just underneath that nasty cut on the flipper. I think a lot of what we're seeing with her is the result of her bobbing around in the ocean for a long time and not being able to go down into the water and, and she's been exposed to, to the wind, she's been exposed to the sun more than she normally would be. Everything's just taken its toll. Yeah. It's just amazing that Fluke is still alive. She's obviously got a strong spirit. She's a fighter. I just hope she can hold on and go a little bit further. And she's got a big battle on her hands here. The tragedy would be if she's come this far and then we lose her now. It's remarkable that she was found. Yep. It's even more remarkable she's still alive considering what she's been up against. We're getting a pretty clear picture of the outside of her. You know, we've got a nasty gash on this flipper here. We've got a little abscess underneath. We've got a lot of sunburn. And we've got just a, a collection of barnacles and algae on the surface. So there's no doubt the outside of her really worries me. It's what's inside, though, that's caused all this. So I think the next step is, is to actually put a needle into her, her body cavity, her sea loam, yep. and just see if we can find either air or some sort of fluid. And if that fluid's passed, then we know there's an infection that's, that's in her body. There's just a little there. Doesn't look pretty. No, it doesn't. It does look like we've got some sort of infection in her body cavity. Right now, all the signs are pointing to the fact that Fluky may be suffering from something called floater syndrome. It's quite mysterious, and what we usually find is gas building up underneath the shell, usually in the gut. Quite often it's caused by an infection, but to really diagnose it, I need to do an x-ray. And to do that, I need to get creative. This might look a little bit strange, but really it's the only way of getting the shot that we need. And most importantly of all, it doesn't hurt Fluky whatsoever. Okay. Happy? X-ray. What do you got? Wow. See that? I see a big black yeah. area. So normally in a turtle, their lungs are about there. So just a small space like that. Here, over half, or probably three quarters of that body cavity, is air. Air. So she's a floater. She's got floater syndrome. Yeah. The fact that we're pulling pus out of that body cavity says that she has an infection in there. That could have been the initial cause. Mm. That is the x-ray of a really, really sick turtle. Yeah. What Fluky really needs right now is an antibiotic injection. That way she can start fighting this infection straight away. 
even though she's a turtle, she's no different to any other animal. They get dehydrated when they're sick. Mm. So I need to give her some fluids. But what we'll do is give her about 15 or 20 mils an hour. Mm -hmm. We just start to rehydrate her. Mm. That nasty gash on Fluky's flipper is certainly hard to ignore. And really the best thing I can do right now is clean it up and get rid of any bacteria that are present. Just give a bit. Yeah. All right. Look, mate, I'm pretty happy that we've now stabilised her. So what she really needs now is to recover. So I'm thinking we take her over to, to Manly. Yeah. And I know just the place for her. You know, you do? Yeah. Good. I might say goodbye to both of you at this yeah. point. And good luck. The reality is that Fluky's battles are only just beginning. She's still incredibly vulnerable, and my hope is that what I've done today proves to be enough. Oh, wow. Real prepared. All prepared. Amazing. So, this is the new home. Chris has found the ideal place for Fluky's much needed rehabilitation. Good luck, little girl. Feel better pretty soon. The Hawksbill turtle is suffering from floater syndrome and is about to begin the long road to recovery at the Manly Sea Life Sanctuary. Fluky's doing it pretty hard at the moment. She has an uphill battle. The next couple of days will be critical for her. So what we hope is that Fluky will start showing us a few positive signs to show that she's on the way to recovery. So we'll do our best and whatever we can to help her out. That's fresh water at the moment, isn't it? Yes. Freshwater is one of the first things we do when we do have rescue turtles. It does take care of all that barnacle growth on her shell and on her slippers and on her head. So hopefully they will fall off. And that's in addition to rehydrating her as well. It seems strange to put Fluky into a tank that has such a low level of water. The fact is when she's weak like this, having her in deep water means she could actually drown. By having that little island in the middle means she can actually dock herself on there and rest up and rest is what she needs. It's actually really encouraging to see her move around like that. Good sign she's able to raise her head and, and yeah. take a breath by herself. So we'll see how Fluky goes, but we'll give her the best care possible and hopefully she makes a full recovery yeah. and time will tell. The fact is right now, Fluky's health is balanced on a knife edge. She's got some weight to put back on. She's obviously got to get rid of that air that's inside her body cavity. But really, it's about her building up her strength and her immune system. If she can do that, we're a much better chance of getting that recovery we need here. I arrived right at mealtime. Hi, Dr. Chris. You how are you? We have. Welcome back. Yeah. Well, thank you. How are you? Look at her. A few weeks later, Chris has returned to the Manly Sea Life Sanctuary to check up on Fluky. She's looking much, much better. She's sorted out all the buoyancy issues, so yeah. she's swimming very well. And also, those barnacles are gone. Yep, the fresh water bath has taken care of those, and that's made her more active and, and way more healthy. So we've identified what our issue was. It comes down to something very small like that. What is that? So this is a little piece of latex or rubber. It's almost like a uh, part of a, a balloon. Yeah. So this was embedded in the top of Fluke's neck. Where she had that swelling. Exactly. Wow. It doesn't seem like much, but when that little piece of rubber lodged in the skin folds around Fluke's neck, it caused a lot of swelling. And that swelling meant that she couldn't eat and she found it hard to breathe. Every day would have been a struggle. It just shows you how, how tough it is for these guys out there. Most definitely, and these types of things in the ocean are a huge uh, risk to all of our marine life. Obviously there's one place that this piece of rubber comes from, and it's from us. It's from our waste, and it's just been a one-way trip for Fluky to being quite sick and quite unwell. Fluky's recovery still has a long way to go. She needs to regain her condition to have any hope of being released back into the wild. Well, look, keep up the great work. Thank you, Dr. Chris. Thank you for visiting us again. No worries, Fluky. I'll see you soon, girl. Four months later, Chris is in Coffs Harbour to see a very special patient. Hello guys, how are you? G'day Marina. 
did it ever think that they would come? Uh, I did have my doubts initially. She was in quite a bad way when you first brought her to us. Fluky would have to be one of the most extraordinary patients I've ever had the pleasure of treating. She was found floating off the coast of Sydney, lost and alone, and really with no chance of survival. She was rescued by some fishermen who brought her into shore, and from there, Tim Faulkner brought her to me. And then, after that, she's been cared for by Manly Sea Life. Hey, Fluky. Hey. This is a day that we almost didn't dream would ever happen. When she first came into me all those months ago, she was in terrible shape, desperately underweight, with infections all over her body and with a piece of rubber wrapped around her neck. All her wounds are, are closed over, she's gained quite a nice weight and she's passed all of her pre-release checks. She's as good as new now, so it's all up to her. The team at Manly Sea Life Sanctuary are very, very, very happy to be able to release Fluky back uh, home where we hope that she will flourish and survive and grow into an adult tool that can then reproduce and, and do her bit for the species. I'm sure she's got salt air in her nostrils. I think so just too. Raring to go. I think so. So, should we do it? Let's let's do it. We've chosen Coffs Harbour for a couple of reasons. First of all, the conditions are perfect, the water temperature is ideal at 25 degrees, and the currents are really favourable. There's no reason why once we get Fluky into that water, she won't take off and hopefully go back to what should be a long and happy life out there in the wild. Let's go. We get you home to see the family for dinner. You're a bit late. <laughs> while since you saw the big blue. You gonna try to hold it for you, Emma? I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, guys. Good luck, Good luck. Good. Sometimes turtles will hang around, they'll bob their head up, they'll try to get their bearings for Fluky. There's none of that. Good luck. Good yeah. Day. Good day. Beautiful. Straight away under the wave. More like a rocket. That is awesome. Amazing. Good result. Incredible work. Incredible. <laughs> That's speed. Amazing. She was ready to go. Up until this point, Marina's really tried to put on quite a brave face, but seeing her girl disappear into the waves like that, all of a sudden, it's too much. You've been giving her back to her home, to where she belongs. Yeah. And there's no, there's no greater gift than being able to do that, especially considering how sick she was. Yeah. So well fantastic. Done, well done. Oh, team effort. <laughs>
The front part of his jaw has just been crushed. There's just not a lot for me to work with here, so it's a challenge. He's going to be on jelly and ice cream for a while. Fracture is not stable yet, so we're just going to connect up these pins with this putty, and then it'll form one sort of solid frame. Once we've got the putty on the pins, that's the critical bit because once that sets, we can't move it. So now the whole jaw is working as one and there's no wobble in it anymore. There's a bit of swelling in here, partly as a result of the pins going in, and that's going to be a little bit of concern for us. So we'll have to watch him pretty carefully for the next couple of hours as he's waking up. Oh, little one. It's been three hours since the delicate surgery on Napoleon's shattered jaw. Finally, the little pug has recovered enough to be allowed a visit from owners Leslie and Lucy. It'll be a bit of a shock for you, because yep. he's got this sort of contraption on his face. Oh. Here you go. I know. Here you go. You oh. said only a mum. Oh my God. What have you got on your face? Yes. It's really sad to see all that around his face. It's just so little. The operation has been a success, but Napoleon will have to be fed by syringe for at least the next three weeks. So you just give him a slow little trickle, just like you would feeding a baby, really. I really didn't expect him to survive. I really didn't. Now look at him, huh? Oh, now look at him. Well, isn't he just the cutest? Give him a bit of a lick, yeah. Righto, Napoleon. Why are you having a sleep, mate? It's time to go home. Just three yeah. days after surgery to yeah. fix his fractured jaw, Napoleon has made a remarkable recovery. Here we go. Go home to your mum. It looks really confronting, but the fracture's now stable. It can't move anywhere, and he's much more comfortable. He's a much happier little guy. You've got a Chris Brown jaw now. Come on, we'll take you home. <laughs> Outside, a relieved Leslie and Lucy are arriving to pick up their baby pug. But despite the great result... Tell me we'll find your mum. ..there's a lingering sadness for Leslie. It was her other dog, Diesel, who attacked Napoleon and she's been forced to find him a new home. I've had Diesel for seven years and I've... I know I'm going to cry. Um, and I've had to give him to my sister. Um, but um, when... If the little fella gets older, I'll probably um, try and get them to be friends again. Oh. Who's that? <laughs> Hello. I'm coming to get you, little girl. Hello. Hello. You're coming home. It will take at least three weeks before Napoleon can finally get rid of that annoying scaffolding. Napoleon's really come out of this pretty well, considering, you know, if he'd have been bitten two centimetres further back in his head, he'd be dead. Come on. Here you go, Roxy, your new home. Tim Faulkner from the Australian Reptile Park is delivering an orphaned wombat to the Hunter Valley Zoo. It's your new home. Jase. Oh, morning, Timmy. How you going? I'm good. Meet Roxy. Oh, this is the one you rung me about. What a little cutie. Is, mate. So I'm swamped. I've got another little wombat, koalas, kangaroos. Zoo owner Jason has offered to help Tim by adopting little Roxy. Take good care of her. She's been living in that? She has. That's a little pouch. All right, mate. Well, I might get one of the girls to come and grab her and get her set up and give her a feed and Dude. get her organised. No worries. Daisy. There you go. Daisy, meet Roxy. Oh, she's so cute. And she's tucked right in. <laughs> Thanks. You ready no to get her set up? Yeah, no worries. Thanks, Daisy. All good, mate. Thanks, Timmy. Thank you for that. Hope you don't think that's it. Got a bit of a job for you. Oh, uh, what do you got? Uh, hey, a little one. 
Little? Just babies. Okay. Nothing to worry Last about. Last time you Nothing to worry about. Me up. Yeah, nah. We're all good. So exactly how big are these babies? Well, they're only 12 weeks old. 12 weeks? 12 weeks, yeah. Jeez. Tim's brought up a little baby wombat today, so we thought we'd share the experience and let him work with one of our babies. All right, you ready for a challenge? Oh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Jace, <Jeez>, truth. <laughs> it's camels. Great. What on earth are we going to do with camels? <laughs> All right, well, these guys can spit, kick, bite, and even squash you down with their front legs. Jace. So the plan today is to, to lead the cows into our holding yards, and then we're going to have to put the effort in to catch the calves by hand, and they're up for drenching, vaccination, and we have to put a halter on them today as well. <laughs> She's Come a bit harder to catch, that one. Yep. You got your work cut out for you. So Jace introduces me to Alice, the stubborn one. <laughs> I've got to go in, try and grab the very short rope, and walk her up to the yard. Hopefully, it's that easy. OK, I'll go back around. Jeez, I'm walking close to those legs. Very easy to want to walk in, isn't it? It is. You get too close, mate, and she could lash out. Yeah, she's not cooperating, Jase. No, nah, you're going to have to try and get her by surprise, mate, and grab that lead. If we don't get them all, we won't get them all in. Oh. <gasps> Come on. Tim's really out of his comfort zone at the moment, so he deals with all his venomous snakes and all this other stuff, but half-ton camels, I don't think he's done this before. Come on. Hey. Got her. Oh, well done. OK. All right, so we're going to walk them up the yard. Hey. Walk up. Walk up. I'm not really sure what to do right now, Alice. Come on, this way. Please, Alice, you're not making me look very good. If they can lead the mothers on, to the yard, the babies will follow. But Tim's camel is holding up the plan. You got to try and bribe him with a bit of food, Timmy. <laughs> no, I'm just smiling at him out now, mate. Little smile. Come on, Alice. With Tim, you know, we're good mates, so I'm setting him up to a degree. I've given him the hardest camel, and I'm not giving him any tips at all on how to move him. So we'll see how he pans out. Timmy, you going to take you much longer, mate? Come on, put that lip down. <laughs> it was right up then. Come on, this way. Come on. Come on. Come on, Alice. Come on, I'll just get you started. This way. Alice is eyeballing me. For a minute there, I thought we had a bit of a connection, but she is non-cooperative. Come on, Alice. I don't think they're going to go any further, mate. Might have to radio some of the boys and get them to come in behind and help push them on. Just move them up? Yep, I'll radio okay. them now. I'll just stay here. OK, good idea. <laughs> I'd love to say I'm warming to the camels, but I'm not. I can see they're full of character, but also full of attitude. Everything I'm trying, not working. <laughs> Howdy, boys. We need a hand. Might get you guys to scoot around behind this time so we can get these guys in the yards. The reinforcements have arrived. Whoop. You got to hang on at this point. Finally, the camels move into the yards where the babies can be separated from their mothers. You coming, Timmy? I'm not tall enough, mate. She's ignoring me. That's a girl. In this confined area, the real danger now is there's no real room to move, so the camels can kick you nearly in every position you're in. OK, make it nice and quick, eh? Hey? Yep. Now's our chance there, now, mate. Yep. The team has to work fast on this agitated calf. Up we go. First putting on a halter. <laughs> and then vaccinating. Good. OK. Ready, guys? Yep. Done. It's noisy and it looks stressful for the calf. But it's not. It's very quick. There's not that much pressure on. The calf's crying for mum. That's what it wants. A bit of drench and then we can let this guy go. OK, mate, done? Yep. Done. All right. All right, we'll let this guy go. OK, straight out this way? Straight out that way, mate. So yep. spin that ball around to your right. And let him run out. <laughs> go, go, go. You're free, buddy. One young bull down, one to go. One, one cow to go. And I'm shaky. And she's bigger. <laughs> OK, let's get it done. She's a lot bigger than Same the other Same side one. again, you want the head? Yep. Head up that end. Okay. Okay. It's time to trick the second camel. And this calf isn't happy. She needs to turn around and get her head facing come on, that way. Come can. on, come on, come on. Right okay. on, in we go, guys. <laughs> Tim and Jason have to fit the calf with a halter and then vaccinate. Right. 
neighbouring pen, the mothers are anxious to be reunited with their babies. We'll go the injection first, mate. Okay. Catch number two, and I'm in go mode. I'm feeling good. I want to get on with it now and let this second calf go, reunite them with mum. Now, bit of drench. <laughs> okay, all done. Okay. Right. Step back a bit. Okay. There we go. Oh. Yes, he was strong. See, there's no other way really to handle him. No. No, You've no. You've got to get, no. in here, get in close, get into the action and get the job done. Mate, full on. I thought we were yeah. looking at your new camels. Well, we were. Up close. Oh, that's intense, mate. Calf number two, done. Hold her on, injected, drenched. Now we can go back in with Mum. Come in there. We'll let them settle for five minutes and then they can go back out. Yeah, they're ready to go. Ready to go? Oh, well, eh, mate? What are you doing? <laughs> You're going to get yeah, spit yeah. there? He's wondering what we're up to with the babies, I reckon. Yeah, okay, let's let him out. All right. One, two. Okay. Okay, here we go. I love having Tim here. It's good stirring him up. I love putting him out of his comfort zone and seeing the look on his face when we set him up for some of these quirky jobs. They're off. Woof! That quick? All went well. Oh, good morning, mate. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, thanks for the wombat and cup of tea. No worries. We'll get you back for the next crazy adventure. <sighs> Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek. If you love our show and want to see more amazing stories from the Bondi Vet team, just hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you for our next video.